Great Lakes Prepping here. In today's video, we're going to be making some delicious applesauce from these beautiful fresh apples. And my favorite way to make applesauce is with some cinnamon, so that's the recipe we're going to be using today. And after we make a whole bunch of applesauce, we're going to can it up in these quart jars. This is a pretty simple recipe and a relatively simple process. There are a few steps to go through and we're going to walk through every single one of them. So let's do it. Now real quick, let's talk about the apples. You can really make applesauce out of any kind of apples you want, but there are definitely ones that are considered a little better for doing so. Apples that are a little on the softer side are preferable. And beyond that, it's a matter of what your taste preferences are. My personal favorite to use are Fuji apples, which is what I have here. I like my applesauce to be sweet. I don't really love the taste of tart, so I'm going with the Fujis. If you do like a tart applesauce, Macintoshes are a really good option for that. So the first thing we really have to do is break down these apples. Take the skins off and cut them up and get the core out of them. And there's a couple ways we could go about doing that. You could certainly sit there at the table like my grandma used to and use a paring knife and meticulously peel the skins off. I don't believe that I was born with that skill set or that talent, so that's not the way I do it. You could also use a food strainer or food mill, and that would involve cooking the apples for a bit first to get them kind of soft and then running the whole thing through your food strainer and it will separate the seeds and the peels and all that. And I could certainly do that. I love my food straining machine, but I have something that's even better for doing this in my opinion and really makes quick work of the whole process. This is my Victorio potato peeler, apple peeler, apple slicing machine. I actually did a video about this several years ago and I've really come to appreciate it a lot more in the time since. This thing really does make pretty quick work out of peeling an apple. So that's what I'm gonna do now to all these apples. And by the way, what we're going for is to end up with somewhere between eight and 10 pounds of our apples. And that's eight to 10 pounds of apple that's been peeled and cored and just the fruit that we're gonna make our sauce out of. And as we go through these apples, I'll just throw them into this uh, pot of water that has just a shot of uh, lemon juice in it. That's gonna help my cut up apples uh, keep from turning brown just during the time that I'm working with everything. So I'm gonna get started peeling and cutting up these apples. Look how fast and easy that was. Isn't that, isn't that just perfect? So I need to just do that about 30 more times. So we've drained the lemon water from the apples and now we're gonna put it on the stove in the big old stock pot and add back in uh, about a cup and a half of water. Now what we wanna do is just sort of cook all these apples until they're pretty soft. And we wanna do our best to kind of break them up as they cook just so we can stir it a bit. We don't really want anything burning on the bottom of the pan. And there's a lot in here. I might have overfilled this a little bit, but I'll just use my big barbecue spatula here to kind of churn this about and stir it as best I can as it's heating up. I also could have taken the time to break up these sort of spirals of apple a bit more and they wouldn't fill this pot quite so high, but that's all right. 
And if you can hear the racket going on in the background, that's my canner. I've been sterilizing the jars in the boiling water and uh, they're, they're finished sterilizing now, but I'm gonna keep that water at a simmer pretty much the whole time. And when I pull those jars out, I'll fill them ASAP with the piping hot applesauce. And that way there'll be less overall cooking time in the jars because the water in the canner won't need quite so long to get back up to a boil. So we're gonna put very hot sauce into hot jars, into a hot canner, and then we can start processing it. So I'm just gonna pay attention to these apples for the next little while, stir them and mix them up as much as I can pretty constantly until they're uh, rather soft. So we'll pick it up in a little bit. Well, these apples have been simmering for oh, about 15 minutes and they're getting pretty soft. I can pretty easily stir them and they're just kind of mashing up as I do so. So at this point, I want to puree it. And to do that, I'm going to use my immersion blender. It works super well and it's really quite convenient. But if you don't have an immersion blender, you could very carefully scoop this molten apple out of the pot and put it in a food processor or even a regular countertop blender. And if you don't have any of those things, you could just use a potato masher and just start, get to work mashing all this up as best you can. For me, I'm gonna use the immersion blender. Okay, we've got our sauce pureed back on the stove over medium heat. And by the way, when I used that immersion blender, you saw it in super fast forward, but I had that thing in here for a solid three minutes. I'd want to make sure that it is absolutely pureed because I like my apple sauce sauce. I don't like it chunky. So as we get this thing up to a simmer and then a boil, it's going to start spitting quite a bit. So I'm going to put this lid on there uh, or at least mostly cover it so we can still let some steam escape and now we're going to add in the rest of our ingredients so we've got three tablespoons of lemon juice a cup of white sugar now i'll mention that the sugar is completely optional you can put in as much as two two and a half cups if you prefer now since i'm adding my cinnamon which will do about two tablespoons i think adding a little bit of sugar helps offset that a little bit and make it more delicious but again i'm using a pretty sweet apple so the sugar is completely optional i do like a lot of cinnamon though you can add as much or as little of that as you want now i just basically need to let this pot come up to a boil and stir it quite frequently just as it's about to get to a boil i'll remove my jars from the canner and get them on the counter and get ready to start filling them and one more quick note, while we do have to bring this up to boil, we don't necessarily need to simmer it for a long time to reduce it. Applesauce is thick and smooth, but it's not really overly thick. It's still pretty fluid, and that's what we're going for. So a lot of recipes that are maybe similar to this would call for some level of reducing because you wouldn't want a watery, let's say, tomato sauce. This isn't really gonna be watery as it is. It's just gonna be just right. So don't feel the need to sit here and let this reduce all day. So using our jar grabber tool, we'll take these jars out and very carefully empty the hot water out of them. This water is very hot and I can't stress enough how slowly and carefully to do this part. So we've got our handy canning funnel and we're just starting to ladle the sauce on in. Again, everything is very hot. So I'm not gonna touch the jars, the sauce, or anything else with my bare hands. Well, with the exception of the ladle and the funnel, I guess. And what we're going for is a half inch of headspace. So using our headspace measuring slash debubbling tool, we'll find our half inch notch 
and just sort of measure it. That's the distance between the top edge of the jar and the level of our sauce. And it looks like each of these needs a little bit more, except for maybe this one here. And I couldn't have cut this recipe closer because I'm at the bottom of the barrel here and I've got just about exactly four quarts and that's that's perfect. It's it's really kind of a pleasant surprise when you get an exact number of jars out of a, a batch of something. Okay, now we'll take the same debubbler headspace measuring tool and just sort of debubble. That's working this tool around the inside walls of the jar. What we're looking for is to dislodge any sort of rogue air bubbles that might be trapped in there. We don't like trapped air bubbles in our canned stuff. We want to be able to let them escape through the top and we won't have any problems. Next, we have to wipe the rims of the jars with a damp paper towel. Now you gotta do this to make sure you get any bits of food residue off that top edge to ensure that there is a tight seal with the gasket on that lid. And of course, again, these are super hot, so I'm gonna grab these jars with this dish towel as I do this. Okay, now we just got to put on the lids. And then our metal rings. All we want is to tighten these about finger tight. We don't want to crank them down on there. Just about like that. Now these are going into the canner. So like I said, I've had the water in this canner simmering this entire time because I want it to be pretty hot to go along with those pretty hot jars. And it's going to get up to boiling quicker and that means less overall cook time while still having the full amount of processing time that's required for a food safe can. As you can see, I'm getting pretty close to the top of this canner. When I sterilized those jars, they were empty. Now they're full, so it's going to displace more of that water. And as that comes up to a full boil, I'm a little worried about it boiling over. That being said, I definitely want to have a good inch of water over top the level of the jars. So I can't really remove much of this water. It kind of makes me wish that these uh, the canner companies would make these things just a little bit taller to give you a little more leeway to work with. But what are you going to do? We're just going to keep an eye on it. Once it starts at a full rolling boil, that's when our processing time has begun. And that's when I may need to adjust my heat just a little bit to make sure that the boil doesn't boil over. So we'll just watch it from there and we'll pick it back up once this hits that full boil, which shouldn't take long. I'm already seeing it starting to bubble. All right, so here we are at our full rolling boil. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on and set my timer for 20 minutes. You have to process applesauce for 20 minutes, regardless if it's quarts or pints. So we'll pick it up after the processing is done. All right, the processing is done. And now I'll just let these jars sit in this canner for just a few more minutes until they've started to come down in temperature just a little bit before I bring the jars out into the room temperature air. So now I'll just leave these jars on the counter on this towel here for a long time, several hours, until they're completely down to room temperature. Then they're ready to store or eat or do whatever I want. Now over the next little while I'll start to hear the lids pop and that's the sound I like to hear because it means that the canning was successful. But as always, if any of your lids don't pop and or they can be easily removed when you take the rings off, uh, that means that that jar did not successfully can, and it is not shelf stable. But that's okay, it happens once in a while. It doesn't mean you've wasted your applesauce, it just means that it's not shelf stable. So put it in the refrigerator and eat it in whatever amount of time that you might eat an open jar of applesauce from the store. As far as canning recipes go, it doesn't get much easier than applesauce. 
there's really no wrong way to prepare the apples. You just need to get the peels out of there along with the core and the seeds and get those apples heated up and mashed into a puree. Add sugar, cinnamon, or other spices if you like. As long as you make sure to add that lemon juice, it's gonna can just fine. So that's it for now. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future canning videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.